Well, welcome to the first of 2024's HBF uh, season. I hope you're glad to be together. Maybe you're new to the group. Maybe you are a group that's been together for many years. And this is just another year on the calendar. And so why don't we just spend a little time uh, just sharing with one another what our hopes and our dreams are for our walk with Jesus here in 2024. Maybe just share one thing that you would like to see in your spiritual growth for the year ahead. And then let's just pause and let's pray for one another as we look to the year and look to the Lord that's in it. So the first part of our theme verse that I was looking at on Sunday morning was really just setting the context, setting the scene for really what is John's conclusion, his purpose statement for his whole gospel. And it's taken there in the upper room or whatever room it was, but it was up above in an upper room on the day the Lord Jesus rose from the dead. And, and read it in verse 19 of chapter 20. Let me read it and let's read it together here. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood by them among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side and his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. And as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So thinking about this scene here, we've got the Lord rising from the dead, the disciples huddling together, gathering, not just the ten, but we know from Luke 24 that there were many other disciples and followers of Jesus gathering with them. And they're processing their saviour, who they had loved and walked with and worked with for all these years. He had just died on the Friday before. And they're gathering, they're processing together, they're grieving together, and Thomas isn't there. And so the first couple of questions I wanted to have us pause and reflect on were this. Thomas wasn't there for whatever his motives. Maybe he wanted to withdraw and grieve privately. Maybe he was disillusioned and felt like, what's the point? I'm just going to do my own thing. But he missed out. He missed out on the Lord's appearing and he missed out on this miraculous event that was really something that was shared with the rest that were there. And so I want to have us just ponder for a moment. How do you respond when situations in life are hard and maybe you're a bit disillusioned, maybe you're a bit despondent, a bit discouraged? Are you prone to withdraw? Are you prone to remove yourself from the gathering of God's people? Or maybe you're prone to do other things. Why don't we share for just a, a few minutes, how do we respond when times are tough? And what do we stand to miss out on? What do we stand to lose by doing that? So in this second section, we've got the evidences for Jesus, the evidences of our faith, the object of our faith was the second section. Thomas here says, well, unless I see the hands with the marks of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's Thomas's response to the disciples saying, we've seen the Lord. What are your dot, 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 I will never believe? What things do you think I just don't understand. I believe, but I, I doubt this or I doubt that. Be honest with your HBF as you share. What are your doubts like Thomas has here? I mean, he's honest about his struggles. He's maybe a little bitter and upset and angry that Jesus died. Maybe he believed that Jesus said, that I'll die and on the third day rise again. But when he saw him die, he, he was discouraged and thought, you know what, I, I'm just done with all of this. And when they said, we've seen him, Thomas's response is, no, unless I see it and feel his hands and touch his side, I'll never believe it. Where are you at with that? What things do you struggle with? What are your doubts? What are your things that you need to pray and say, I believe, but help my unbelief? Why don't we share for a little minute or two together?
Of course, Jesus provides the goods. He is the object of our faith. He's there. He appears again. And once again, he proclaims peace, verse 26. And he addresses Thomas, the missing brother, the missing disciple. And he says, here, put your fingers here on my side. Put your hands on my hands. Feel the holes. Feel the wound in my side. He says, don't disbelieve, but believe. And look at Thomas's response. Thomas responds, my Lord and my God. He responds with this confession of faith, this confession that Jesus is the Lord of his life, that Jesus is the Son of God. And in believing, Jesus says, you're blessed, but more blessed are those who believe and yet have not seen me. So let's just think about this for a minute. John writes his gospel. His purpose in writing it is to, is to testify to Jesus and his life and ministry, his death and resurrection, his divinity. But in writing his gospel, he desires that the disciples, the followers of Jesus who read his gospel, wouldn't just believe, but that they would come out of the closet as a professing Christian, just like Thomas, that they would be out there, up on the radar, that they would be counted for being a follower of Jesus, that they wouldn't hide their lamp under a bushel, that they wouldn't be hidden from sight. And so for us, let's discuss for a moment or two, in what ways can we be out and out Christians? authentic as followers of Jesus. Not just when we're asked, do you go to church on a Sunday? Yes, I do. But when we're asked, what do you believe about the resurrection? What do you believe about Christian ethics or abortion or whatever the topic might be? How do we respond when we are asked? Are we authentic and genuine and upfront? Or do we respond with obfuscation and, and confusing sort of half answers? Are we those who profess Jesus is my Lord and my God? He is the Son of God in the flesh who died and rose again for me. Let's discuss that together. So in closing our time tonight, let's look at our theme verse for the year. Let's read it together and let's read it out loud with me. So if you've got it in your hands, in your Bible, or if you've got it on your phone, pull out your pocket, get it ready. I'm rambling to give you time just now, but let's get it ready and let's read it out loud together in the room wherever you are. Let's read it together from verse 31. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Well, here in this last section, let's think about what it means to be by believing you may have life in his name. What does it mean to be a Christian who is ongoing in that faith, growing in faith, stretching their faith, seeing growth and improvement and spiritual maturity deepening in their Christian walk? How can we encourage one another in that? How can we say, oh, I see things that are uh, a real maturing in you? How do I say to someone else, I see a real difference in you in the way you've responded in that situation? As we thought about at the beginning of our time tonight, what is our aspirations for the year ahead? Where would we like to be in our walk with Jesus by December 2024? And then let's look at this. How can we be those who believe and are born again, but in believing, by believing, and an ongoing walking the walk of life basis, have life in his name. And what does that look like for us? And how can we check it?